Welcome, this is the second part of the bonus layer and the last video on the out-of-place artifacts iceberg. If you didn't see the rest of the videos I'm gonna link the playlist in the top right and in the description. If you found the video and the whole iceberg interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe. This iceberg was made by Polariath. The Mahogany Ship is a presumed early Australian shipwreck believed by some to be located beneath the sand near Armstrong Bay, about 3 to 6 kilometres west of Warrnambool in southwest Victoria, Australia. Originally associated with the theory proposing Portuguese discovery of Australia, recent research has cast doubt on this idea. The Mahogany Ship Symposia held in Warrnambool in 1981, 1987, and 2005 garnered significant public and academic interest, featuring contributions from notable figures like Manning Clark, Barry Jones, Kenneth McIntyre, Lawrence Fitzgerald, and others. Turkey Mountain Urban Wilderness Area is a 738-acre wilderness park in Tulsa, Oklahoma, managed by the Tulsa River Parks Authority. It is open to the public, with the main entrance located at 67th Street and Elwood Avenue in West Tulsa. Near the river, there are stone markings, including one claimed to be the letters GWN, believed by some to be petroglyphs left by pre-Columbian European travelers. However, the park dismisses this as pseudo-archaeology, attributing the markings to soft sandstone vulnerable to erosion, suggesting they may have been created in the 1920s by oil field workers searching for oil in the area. The Tucson artifacts, also known as the Tucson Lead Crosses or Silver Bell Road artifacts, were discovered in 1924 near Picture Rocks, Arizona, by Charles E. Manor and his family. Initially thought to be relics from early Mediterranean civilizations that had crossed the Atlantic in the first century, the 31 lead objects, including crosses, swords, and religious items, were later exposed as a hoax. The artifacts featured inscriptions in Hebrew or Latin, depictions of temples, portraits of leaders, angels, and even a dinosaur on a sword blade. One item referenced Calalus, the unknown land, believed by some to be the settlement's name. The objects also displayed Roman numerals, interpreted by some as a creation date. However, the site lacked additional artifacts, pottery, glass, human or animal remains, as well as any evidence of hearths or housing. On April 18, 1961, at 11 a.m., Joe Simonton witnessed a flying saucer hovering above his rural Eagle River home. The craft landed in his backyard, revealing three mute, Italian-looking aliens inside. They communicated a desire for water, and after Joe provided it, one alien cooked pancakes on a flameless appliance. The aliens gave him the pancakes, saluted, and flew away. Despite the seemingly fantastical details, the incident was investigated by the United States Air Force and remains classified as unexplained. Joe tried one pancake, describing it as tasting like cardboard, and gave the others to a ufologist in Vilas County. The fate of these tasteless culinary oddities is unknown. The Yarmouth Stone, also known as the Yarmouth Runic Stone or Fletcher Stone, is a quartzite slab with a purported runic inscription that gained public attention in the early 19th century. The inscription has been interpreted as Norse runes, Japanese, Basque, or Early Greek, sparking speculation about a possible Viking visit to Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, around 1000 CE various theories, including hoax and natural forces, have been proposed. The stone, measuring 31 inches by 20 inches by 13 inches and weighing about 400 pounds, is on display at the Yarmouth County Museum. It features inscribed characters between 1 inch and 1 and a half high, with modern paint and a written date of 1007 from a previous display stand. The Hall of Records is an alleged ancient library said to exist underground near the Great Sphinx of Giza in Egypt, originating from claims made by Edgar Cayce in the 1930s. Casey, a self-proclaimed clairvoyant, asserted that Atlantean refugees built the hall around 10,500 BC to preserve knowledge after the destruction of Atlantis. The idea was influenced by earlier pseudoscientific theories about Atlantis and hidden chambers under the Sphinx. In the 1990s, Casey's claims became linked with French hypotheses about the origin and age of Giza's monuments. Despite increased attention to the site, including the exploration of a tomb called the Water Shaft in 1999, nothing matching Casey's description has ever been found. The Verendry Stone, allegedly discovered by French-Canadian explorer Pierre Gaultier de Varennes et de la Verendry in the 1730s during an expedition west of the Great Lakes, is not documented in official records. The information is primarily derived from a discussion between La Verendry and Swedish scientist Per Kalm in 1749. According to Kalm, the tablet, about 13 inches long with inscriptions in unknown characters, was found atop an upright stone or cairn. The discovery location is debated, with Jelmer Holland suggesting near Minot, North Dakota, and Father Antoine Champagne proposing a location near Pierre, South Dakota. Some locals claimed the tablet and stone had always been there. 
Holland speculated that the inscription, potentially in Norse runes, could be related to the Kensington runestone, claiming an expedition west from Vinland in 1362. He argued that Tatarian writing resources available to Jesuit priests in Quebec showed similarities to Norse characters in engraving structure. Theodore C. Blagan cautioned against interpreting rune-like markings on stones, suggesting they could be traces left by prehistoric creatures and may mislead non-experts in runology. The Michigan relics, also known as the Scotford frauds or Soper frauds, are a collection of alleged ancient artifacts supposedly discovered in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Some presented them as evidence of an ancient, Near Eastern culture in North America, suggesting pre-Columbian contact. However, scholars have widely deemed these artifacts to be archaeological forgeries. The Michigan relics are recognized as one of the most elaborate and extensive pseudo-archaeological hoaxes in American history. The Gosford glyphs, also known as Carrion hieroglyphs, consist of around 300 Egyptian-style hieroglyphs located in Carrion, Australia, within the Brisbane Water National Park. Found in an area known for Aboriginal petroglyphs, these glyphs were discovered in the 1970s but dismissed as a hoax by authorities and academics. Despite evidence to the contrary, some still attempt to support the false claim that these hieroglyphs were carved by ancient Egyptians approximately 4,500 years ago. Rumors of Egyptian glyphs in the area date back to the 1920s, but the National Parks and Wildlife Service became aware of them in the early 1980s. In late 2023, Efforts to dislodge unsafe boulders near the glyphs by the National Parks and Wildlife Service faced criticism from residents and a local environmental protection organization, who deemed the actions unnecessary and extreme. The Wawel Chakra is a location on Wawel Hill in Krakow, Poland, believed by adherents to emanate powerful spiritual energy, considered one of the world's main centers of spiritual energy. Positioned under St. Gerion's Chapel, it is seen as part of an esoteric energetic system within the earth, akin to a chakra in the human body. The belief has theosophical roots from the 1930s, gaining contemporary attention in the 1980s. Treated as a research subject by dowsers and geomants, it is viewed as a place of spiritual and healing energy by New Agers. However, it is a source of contention for those with firm Catholic or scientific backgrounds, and authorities in the church and museums do not welcome it. The San Pedro Mountains mummy, informally known as Pedro, was discovered in Wyoming in the 1930s, becoming part of American folklore, ufology, and cryptozoology due to its unusual features and small size. Mainstream scientific opinion considers Pedro to be the mummy of an anencephalic infant born with cranial deformities. Found in October 1932 by prospectors Cecil Main and Frank Carr, it was initially thought to be a tiny person. X-ray examinations revealed the anencephalic nature, resembling a miniature adult. A second mummy, examined in the 1990s, also proved to be an anencephalic infant of Native American origin through DNA testing, dating back to around 1700. The first mummy sparked debates over its authenticity and purpose, leading to its display in a Mitizi, Wyoming drugstore. Eventually acquired by Ivan T. Goodman, then Leonard Wadler, a New York businessman, its current location is unknown. Seeking to disprove evolution, a $10,000 reward was offered for finding the missing mummy, as reported by the Casper Star Tribune. In 1998, property developer Michael Bauman purchased a plot of land in downtown Miami with plans to build a luxury condominium after demolishing a 1950s apartment complex. However, during an archaeological survey, mysterious holes were discovered in oolitic limestone bedrock, leading to the halting of development. Further investigation revealed a perfect circle of 24 holes, 38 feet in diameter, dating back 1,800 to 2,000 years. Known as the Miami Circle, it is the only known evidence in the U.S. of a prehistoric structure built into bedrock, believed to have been occupied by the Tequesta Indians. The site contains artifacts, including basalt axe heads contradicting Tequesta origin theories. The site earned the nickname America's Stonehenge, with alternative theories ranging from aliens to septic tanks. After disputes, the state of Florida purchased the land, declaring it a National Historic Landmark in 2009. The Miami Circle is currently under a 44-year lease with the Historical Museum of Southern Florida, with artifacts on display in their permanent exhibition. The actual post holes are covered to preserve the site, but visitors can still see the limestone perimeter and contemplate the area's long history. In 2003, South African pilot Johan Heine discovered a megalithic stone calendar known as Adam's Calendar in the Mpumalanga region. The site features three monolithic dolomite stones and a large stone circle with a diameter of 100 feet often referred to as the birthplace of the sun or Africa's Stonehenge. Michael Tellinger claimed it is the world's oldest man-made structure, suggesting a vanished civilization built it, but his claims are widely disputed. Despite generating buzz, the true age, origin, and purpose of Adam's calendar remain a mystery yet to be solved.
The world's largest axe, built in 1991 in Nakawick, New Brunswick, Canada, serves as a monument to the significance of lumber and forestry. Erected in the same year Nakawick was named the forestry capital of Canada, the colossal construction features a 23-foot chrome steel blade and a 50-foot handle buried in a massive concrete stump, which is 33 feet in diameter. Weighing 55 tons, the axe commemorates the industrious lives of Canada's lumberjacks. The axe head also contains a time capsule for future generations. The wide stump hosts musical and theater performances, making the world's largest axe more than just a roadside oddity. The Berkeley Mystery Walls are ancient stone walls spread across the East Bay, extending over 50 miles from Berkeley to San Jose. Their origin, age, and purpose remain unknown, sparking speculation for over a century. The walls, up to five feet tall and constructed from boulders, appear in broken sections, ranging from a few meters to half a mile in length, and are found in unlikely and inaccessible places. They don't seem to serve a known purpose, lacking continuity and height for enclosure or defense. The walls lead towards M.T. Diablo, connecting to mysterious stone circles and forming a 200-foot-wide spiral in one location. Spanish settlers and local Ohlone American Indians reported the walls predated their arrival. Various theories suggest prehistoric origins, Mongolian settlers, early missionaries, or remnants of Sir Francis Drake's colonization. Despite speculation, the mystery walls of the East Bay remain unsolved. Interested visitors can explore them in parks such as Tilden Regional Park, Ed Arlevin County Park, and Mission Peak Regional Preserve. The phenomenon of living entombed animals, particularly frogs or toads, found alive after being encased in solid rock, coal, or wood for extended periods, has been mentioned in historical writings, including those of William of Newburgh, J.G. Wood, Ambrose Pear, and others. Charles Dickens and Benjamin Franklin also referenced such occurrences. About 210 cases have been reported globally since the 15th century. An experiment in 1771 supposedly sealed toads in plaster for three years, with two found alive. Reports involve various animals found in rocks, limestone, or tree trunks. Despite occurrences reported as recently as the 1980s, scientists have dismissed the phenomenon since the 19th century. A notable experiment by geologist William Buckland in the 1820s involved sealing toads in stone blocks, revealing that they could not survive for extended periods. Skepticism increased due to potential misinterpretations, and some stories may be fabrications or hoaxes, such as the Brighton Toad in the Hole presented by Charles Dawson, likely another forgery akin to the Piltdown Man hoax. Apollo 17, the final mission of the Apollo program in December 1972, lasted for 12 days and involved a crew of three. All images from the mission are available in the NASA-hosted Apollo Image Library. Among the images, there's one that sparked debate due to an enhanced version seemingly showing a triangular object resembling a pyramid on the moon's surface. The image, numbered AS17-135-20680, is part of a sequence spanning two film magazines. When viewed in context with the entire sequence, it becomes evident that the photo depicts the floor of the lunar roving vehicle, LRV, and not an actual pyramid on the moon. The debate surrounding the image highlights the importance of considering context when interpreting such photos. The phenomenon of abandoned footwear, such as a lone boot or shoe, is commonly observed in remote locations like ponds or roadsides. This occurrence often involves shoes that may even be new and stylish. Several hypotheses attempt to explain why footwear is more frequently abandoned than other types of clothing. Shoes, being more durable, can last longer outdoors, for instance, leather shoes are estimated to endure for 25 to 40 years. Some instances of shoe abandonment are intentional, as seen in practices like shoe tossing where shoes are tied together and thrown into trees, over power lines, or fences. A large iron sphere, approximately 1.5 meters in diameter, washed up on Enshu Beach in Hamamatsu, Japan, leaving authorities and residents puzzled. Fears of it being a stray mai were dismissed after X-ray examination revealed its hollowness. No evidence links it to espionage by neighboring countries. The presence of handles on the sphere led to the theory that it might be a loose mooring buoy. Police inspected the object, orangey-brown with rust patches, following a woman's discovery, and sent photographs to Japanese self-defense forces and the Coast Guard for further examination. Despite becoming a local mystery, it had been on the beach for a month, and attempts to move it were unsuccessful. Speculation on social media ranged from it resembling something from the manga series Dragon Ball to being a fallen UFO, coinciding with recent concerns about Chinese spy balloons over Japan. Throughout the New England states, there are around 800 stone-built chambers, distinct structures also known as huts, caves, beehives, dolmens, and root cellars. These chambers, exhibiting circular and rectangular designs, feature central chambers, 10 feet tall, 15 to 30 feet long, 
and about 10 feet wide. The most elaborate beehive chambers are conical, with smoke holes, ventilation, shelves, and benches. Constructed with expertly fitted masonry stone and capped with megalithic slabs, they are often found in hillsides, accompanied by cairns, standing stones, and other features. While some consider them root cellars built by early colonists or pre-colonial Native Americans, others propose an ancient origin, suggesting they were built during the Bronze Age by European travelers. Conspiracy theories surrounding Denver International Airport, DIA, claim that the Freemasons, linked to the New World Order, control the airport. Allegations point to Freemason symbols on a dedication plaque dated 1994, a time capsule, and strange markings suggesting secret or alien languages. While the Freemasons were involved in the airport's dedication, there's no evidence of ongoing influence. The time capsule, set for opening in 2094, contains various items, and the New World Airport Commission, associated with DIA's opening festivities, was named by arts advocate Charles Ansbacher. The alleged strange markings are Navajo characters and references to airport artists. The existence of Doveland, a town with various speculative explanations for its disappearance, is considered a hoax, tall tale, or internet legend. The lack of evidence and information suggests it could be a cover-up or, more likely, a mass delusion or urban legend. Proposed explanations include destruction due to damming, economic decline, military experiments, like Project Sanguine, state intervention after a military science experiment, or even a hyperstition, where the idea retroactively grants the town some foothold in reality, similar to the literary concept in Jorge Luis Borges, Tlan, Ukber, or Bistertius. Kinich Janob Pakel I, also known as Pakel or Pakel the Great, was the ajah of the Maya city-state of Palenque during the late classic period of pre-Columbian Mesoamerican chronology. He ascended to the throne in July 615 and ruled until his death on August 29, 683. With a reign of 68 years, Pakel had the fifth longest verified regnal period of any sovereign monarch in history and the longest in world history for over a millennium. His rule included significant construction and extension projects in Palenque, and he is notably depicted on the carved lid of his sarcophagus, which has become a subject of pseudo-archaeological speculations in popular culture. Rongorongo is a system of glyphs discovered on Rapa Nui, Easter Island, in the 19th century, resembling writing or proto-writing. Despite attempts at decipherment, none have been successful. The inscriptions, found on two dozen wooden objects, include tablets, a chieftain's staff, a birdman statuette, and ornaments. The texts are written in reverse booster feed on, with alternating directions. The glyphs depict human, animal, plant, artifact, and geometric forms. Oral history suggests literacy was limited to a small elite, and the tablets were considered sacred. The inscriptions remain undeciphered, and their purpose and content remain a mystery. In 1980, an accidental creation of what appeared to be an invisible electrostatic wall occurred at a 3M plant. This unintended force field phenomenon was detailed by a 3M engineer in the 1997 conference proceedings of the Society of Plastics Engineers. In 1966, both Russia's Luna 9 and America's Orbiter, two captured photographs of solid structures on the lunar surface, arranged in distinct geometric patterns that suggest intentional placement by intelligent beings. The Luna 9 images showed straight lines of equidistant circular stones, resembling an airport runway, in the ocean of storms. These stones, all identical, reflected sunlight at an angle, making them visible to descending aircraft. Russian scientist Drive S. Ivanov analyzed the photos, producing a three-dimensional stereoscopic view that affirmed the stone's equal distance and identical measurements, challenging the official explanation of lunar surface deformation. Buya stones were sacred stones kept by priests in the Murray Islands, located in the Torres Straits. These stones emitted an intense blue light and were believed to possess magical properties. When Europeans arrived on the islands, the priests hid the Buya stones, and their current whereabouts are unknown. Modern speculation suggests that the Buya stones might have contained lumps of pure radium. Cap DWA is purportedly a 12-foot-tall Patagonian giant, and his preserved body is claimed to be housed in a museum in Baltimore, Maryland, USA. Patagonia has a historical association with stories of giants, dating back to explorer Ferdinand Magellan's encounters with natives of extraordinary height during his travels in South America. The indigenous Tehuelche people, known for their relatively taller stature, might have contributed to the perception of Patagonia as a land of giants, with potential exaggerations over time. In 1891, a newspaper reported the discovery of a modern artifact, a chain, in a lump of coal from a South Illinois mine believed to be between 260 and 320 million years old. Mrs. Culp, who found it, initially thought it was accidentally dropped into the coal container, but the chain was still attached to the coal. 
If the reported discovery and the accurate dating of the Coles geological age are true, it raises unlikely questions about the history of civilized man. Beneath Rockwell County and parts of Dallas County, there are stacked mineral stones resembling a wall, buried just below the surface, discovered in 1852. Some theorize that Rockwall was built on an ancient civilization, while others dispute this. The stones are long and narrow, appearing separated by a one- to two-inch layer of sediment. The mystery has been debated for decades, with various outcroppings found throughout the county, including some underneath Lake Ray Hubbard. While some consider the wall evidence of an ancient civilization, others question the origins and consistency of the formations. In October 2016, a documentary crew visited Professor Jamie Gutierrez Liga in Colombia, owner of the controversial Gutierrez Collection, focusing on pre-Columbian artifacts. In a secure room, an 84-year-old Gutierrez presented a large fossil, seemingly human hands, dated to 130 million years old. While it challenged conventional understanding, further examination revealed the fossil to be sea turtle flippers. This artifact, often categorized as an out-of-place artifact, OOP art, highlights the debate between mainstream science and alternative interpretations, with the professor having a unique perspective. NASA's Curiosity rover on Mars captured a photo in May 2022, suggesting a carved doorway into the rock, sparking excitement about potential underground structures. However, closer examination revealed the passage to be only about 45 centimeters high, and geologists identified straight-line fractures intersecting at the site, debunking the idea of a real doorway. This incident is reminiscent of other instances, such as the face on Mars, the spoon on Mars, and the cube on the Moon, where initial excitement about space photos faded upon closer inspection. The Ulfbert swords, totaling about 170, were medieval swords found primarily in Northern Europe, dating from the 9th to 11th centuries. They are characterized by blades inlaid with the inscription, plus Fulfair, plus T, or plus Fulfert, plus. These swords mark the transition from Viking swords, to high medieval knightly swords, with most having blades of oakshot type X. The Ulfbert swords are associated with a period when European swords were predominantly pattern-welded, but as larger steel blooms became available, higher quality swords with crucible steel blades emerged after AD 1000. In 1972, physicist Francis Perrin discovered an anomaly in a uranium ore sample from Gabon, Africa. The ore exhibited a slightly lower proportion of uranium-235, U-235, than expected in natural uranium. Initially, scientists suspected artificial fission, but further analysis confirmed the ore was natural and had undergone fission over 2 billion years ago. The unique geological conditions in Gabon, including a critical mass of U-235, water as a moderator, and specific chemical concentrations, allowed for a natural nuclear chain reaction at the Oklo site, providing evidence of a prehistoric natural reactor. In 1912, Frank J. Kennard claimed to discover a mysterious metal cup within a block of coal in a Wilburton, Oklahoma mine. The coal was estimated to be around 300 million years old. Skeptics question the scientific rigor of Kennard's testimony, suggesting alternative explanations such as the cup being a cast iron object from the 18th century, possibly used for casting molten metals. The artifact has since vanished, contributing to the debate surrounding its authenticity and age, with some proposing that objects like it could end up in coal due to water-hardened puddles in mines. The lack of concrete evidence leaves the true origin and age of the object uncertain. Fragments of a small temple, with unusual columns, featuring figures have been restored in a courtyard north of the city center. A photograph from the early 20th century shows these columns partially exposed in sediment. Unlike typical relief-style carvings, these columns at Oxkentok exhibit figures in an unconventional manner. One statue, named Column 2, has been relocated to the Anthropological Museum in Mexico City, while the other, known as Robot Head, can be found at the Natural History Museum in Merida. Both figures, possibly soldiers or guards, wear armor or protective clothing, with Column 2 potentially representing a notable Premaya military figure. Reproductions of Column 2 can be found in various Mexican museums. The meteorite in question, NWA 869, is unique as it contains a small cylindrical metallic feature, around 6 mm in diameter, protruding at an angle. This feature is not composed of typical meteoritic minerals. Preliminary examination suggests it is distinct from usual accessory minerals found in meteorites. Further analysis is scheduled to understand the origin and composition of this silver cylinder. The inclusion likely existed as part of the meteorite when it entered Earth's atmosphere, raising questions about its origin, possibly from a planet orbiting a population 2 star that exploded as a nova billions of years before our solar system formed. Two Chinese coins from the Northern Song Dynasty period have been discovered in England. The first coin was found in Cheshire in 2018, and the second was recently discovered in Hampshire. 
Both coins, measuring 25 mm, are not part of a suspicious grouping and were unearthed near other medieval artifacts. The Hampshire coin was found close to the only confirmed medieval imported Chinese pottery in England. The Cheshire coin was discovered alongside various artifacts, suggesting relatively unremarkable activity on the site from C1300 to C1750, with no indications of deliberate exotic deposition or loss. The Back Creek Stone, discovered near Knoxville, Tennessee, in 1889, is a small stone tablet with mysterious alphabetic characters. Found during archaeological excavations led by Cyrus Thomas from the Smithsonian Bureau of Ethnology's Mound Survey, the tablet raised questions about a pre-Columbian language. Thomas, intrigued by the discovery, lacked the tools to examine it thoroughly. While his reports are not considered a serious archaeological resource, the Back Creek Stone remains a notable find from the prehistoric mound's exploration in the late 19th century. A white kale and clay vessel discovered in eastern Pennsylvania in 2013, along with other artifacts, has provided insights into the region's history. The vessel's unique features, such as the quartz-based clay and symmetrical shape, differ from traditional Native American earthenware pottery found in the area. The vessel's characteristics, including the absence of impurities and the need for a higher firing temperature in an enclosed kiln, suggest a different cultural or technological influence compared to the Native American pottery commonly associated with the region. The discovery of a Chinese artifact in North America, lacking contextual information, has resulted in inconclusive responses regarding its authenticity. Various institutions, including the Burke Museum, suggested uncertainty about its origin. Some speculated it could be a 20th century fraud, while others expressed uncertainty. The artifact's authenticity remains unknown until subjected to rigorous examination. Marine archaeology in the Gulf of Kumbat, formerly known as the Gulf of Cambay, revolves around controversial findings made by the National Institute of Ocean Technology, NIOT, in 2000. Disputes include claims of submerged city-like structures, challenges in associating dated artifacts with the site, and debates over whether recovered stone artifacts are geofacts or genuine artifacts. Critics argue that the artifacts were retrieved by dredging, making it difficult to definitively link them to the site. Despite controversies, subsequent surveys revealed two paleo channels of old rivers in the Kumbat area. A circular structure, larger than a Boeing 747 jet, has been discovered submerged about 30 feet beneath the Sea of Galilee in Israel. Found accidentally in 2003, the structure, made of basalt rocks arranged in a cone shape, is 230 feet at the base, 32 feet tall, and weighs around 60,000 tons. Its age is estimated between 2,000 and 12,000 years old. Archaeologists suggest it might have been constructed on dry land and later submerged by the lake. The purpose is unclear, with theories ranging from a fish nursery to a communal burial site. Excavations may provide more insights into its significance. The Pantelleria Vecchia Bank megalith, located underwater between Sicily and Tunisia, is a mysterious 15-ton, 12-meter-long megalith made of sedimentary calcerudite limestone. Radiocarbon dating of shell fragments from the stone suggests an age of 40,000 years, while the surrounding ocean floor is 10 million years old. The megalith may have been carved from imported stone when the area was above sea level around 10,000 years ago. It features three holes filled with barnacles and crustaceans, with one hole extending completely through the stone. The artifact's origin and purpose remain uncertain. A German man found a USB stick with a mysterious symbol near a shopping center, containing about 28 images of 20th-century space-related content, including planets, extraterrestrial spaceships, and alien figures. The man shared the images, suspecting they might be authentic. A friend suggested that the stick holds old Voyager probe travel records, claiming the files are top secret. The images also include UFOs, lunar bases, and unidentified alien figures. While the authenticity is debated, experts are analyzing the photographs, noting no apparent signs of CGI input. A petrosoma toglyph is a rock carving or formation resembling parts of a human or animal body, such as feet, knees, elbows, hands, heads, or fingers. These symbolic representations are found worldwide and play roles in religious ceremonies, secular events, and cultural symbolism. The term combines Greek words for stone, body, and to carve. Stylized depictions may be subject to interpretation, and natural formations resembling body parts are called mimetoliths. In Irish history and legend, brain balls, known as Lyothroidian chin, are small stone-like balls believed to be made from the heads or brains of defeated enemies. According to historical accounts, a victorious champion would create these balls by mixing the brain with lime and drying it in the sun. One tale involves a brain ball stolen from the head of Mesquigra and used as a sling stone in a conflict between Connet and Ulster. 
Some Irish dolmens have yielded balls made of various materials, including marble, ironstone, calcium carbonate, porphyry, and cyanite. Archaeologists have debated the authenticity and purpose of these objects, with some associating them with legend and others identifying them as coprolites. Buddha's footprints, known as Buddhapada, are Buddhist icons representing the imprints of Gautama Buddha's feet. These footprints come in two forms, natural, found in stone or rock, and artificial, created by human craftsmanship. While some natural footprints are acknowledged as replicas or symbolic representations rather than authentic imprints of Buddha's feet, they are considered satiya, representing Buddhist relics and early and iconic symbolism of the Buddha. The Nephilim, mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, Christian Old Testament, are enigmatic beings or individuals characterized by exceptional size and strength, existing both before and after the flood. Described in Genesis and Numbers, and possibly referenced in Ezekiel, the term Nephilim is sometimes translated as giants or interpreted to mean the fallen ones from the Hebrew word Naphal, meaning to fall. Scholars debate the precise identity and nature of the Nephilim. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you found the iceberg interesting. There is a link for the playlist if you missed the other videos.